Okay, so let's jump straight in here. What I'm using this time on my picture, instead of my usual friend in brushes, is I'm just using um, my basic smooth watercolour brush that came with my edition of Finder Studio EX5. So what I have here is, as usual, uh, my black and white line art with my flat colour underneath. And what I'm doing right now is I've just I've separated these colours onto separate layers on top. So I've got one here for um, for tunic. So I'm going in right away just with a darker black. I'm just going shading. Now this is going to be very very rough. I've already made at the side there um, some little swatches, as you can see that I normally have of colours that I'm going to be using. So as usual, my usual light source that I have, my default one, is top left. So the shadows are mainly on the right hand side and below, and the highlights on the left hand side and above. As you can see, I'm using quite a small brush. Um, on and off you can see my usual wobbly hands, but um, zooming in on your picture will minimise this effect. I'm not talking very well today for some reason. I'm just oh, I'm all over the place. So a separate layer for this lovely pale skin. I've managed to, for some reason, draw her scars on the skin as well. So as you can see, my uh, my darker skin brush is colouring the scars, but I will go in later and draw the scars back in. So, lovely shiny bosom there. So it's a Carrying on here with my painting, it's what I have is my base colour, one shadow colour, and then one highlight colour, and then I normally expand on that by doing yet again one highlight cover, highlight colour high, li lighter than that one. I'm talking terribly today, and one darker shadow as well. So there's normally at least a variation of five hues to give it more depth. Give more depth. And shading her boots here. You see the light will be going along the top of her leg there. And that leg underneath is more in shadow because obviously the other leg is on top of it. Absolutely devastatingly lovely high heel boots. Funny thing is, is that her male self actually wears those same boots, so those aren't exclusive. The garter is exclusive to female undie charm as I'm calling her, but I never know. I'm not sure what people wear. Very trendy, anyway. Gosh, I love these boots. They look lovely whenever you're done rendering them, but it's like with all the lovely long chaotic hair I like to draw. You love it when it's done, but the actual colouring of it takes so long. While you're doing it, you're sitting there cursing it, like, oh my god, why did I draw something so elaborate? That actually looks quite good to me. Picking up these little spaces in between the straps on her boots. To add in the highlights. See, I'm adding some texture here on these straps. These the straps are almost like, sort of, I'm picturing them like sort of leatherish bandages almost. You can sort of see the, the stretching texture on there, so that's why I'm, I'm painting in that texture. But it looks quite complicated whenever you look at the final picture, but as you can see here, whenever I'm doing them individually, you can see more clearly how I'm putting the shadows on. Going into my highlight. And Jenny, you see that it really starts to bring the texture out. It's really easy to do and it, it makes it look very textured. You can, sort of, you can almost start to feel that sort of slightly rubbery, firm texture from the straps. And then with one colour darker again. It's darkening up these areas. You, you can see, especially whenever you. you take a, a broader look at the picture, you back up a little bit, you can start to see the texture really coming in at this point. And this recording is at 600% of my actual painting speed. So I'm whipping around, but this actually obviously, this obviously took me a lot longer to do than the video you're watching, as usual, so don't be put off by that. And don't be put off by the file disappearing there either, as I'm trying to save. And the fact that I'm running so much software is making my computer want to crash. Okay, now doing her lovely silver hair. 
so I've got one shade darker there. It's almost purplish. I'm just about to see. I'll be going in later and doing more shadows and highlights on top of my painting. You just have a look there at um, at her tunic. Say the shading and highlighting on there, especially the highlighting, is still quite rough. I'll be going in afterwards and smoothing it. You can leave it that way, of course, if that's your style. Zooming out to get myself a, a view there and sort of what I want to do with this hair and some eyes. Okay, so I'm not fully blended yet, but I'm going in now on a layer on top of my separate colour layers with this sort of this greyish, darkish blue colour. It's not very saturated. This is going to be my extra shadow layer. So I'm just putting it on now the colour that it actually is, which is this bluish colour, but I will be setting it later to multiply or darken, whichever I, I fancy that I normally multiply, whatever looks good. So just going over the areas that would have the darkest shadows. There's my great big chomping teeth that I haven't gone in and, and painted over my white yet, so I need to do that afterwards. I did this picture in so many pieces, I had to keep going back and finding the energy and time to do it, so I did something slightly out of order of this picture, but I'll just pretend I was being creative with some kind of great big plan, actually. So, if I'm doing a simple picture, I tend to use just black and white for highlighting, but normally I'm, you know, they would, they should say I'm all pictures, your know, professionals tend to say don't shade with black and white because it, it makes it look now. You should make an effort to use other shades. So I quite like using bluish grey and purplish grey and variations of those colours for my shadows and my highlights. Just have to look at something extra. Let's see here, there where, where I've shaded sort of underneath there between where the thighs are joined. I'm going over here is especially dark shadow here. And things with the video like this as well is that if you need to have a better look at what I'm doing, you can always just pause it and have a look at some of the areas where I'm putting things down. This is all still with the smooth watercolour tool, by the way, because sometimes I will go in and do harder shading and highlighting. But everything that I'm doing here, absolutely everything, is with the smooth watercolour tool. Where it looks a bit harder or a bit softer, it's where I'm varying my pressure or where I'm using a larger or smaller brush. Doing my highlights here, you can see those. One more on top of his leg. Oh. And sometimes you absolutely fall in love with a, a part of a picture whenever you're doing it. Sometimes you absolutely hate them, sometimes you fall in love with them. It's like, oh, these straps, these straps on the leg, they're causing me so much effort, but they're, oh, they're so dreamy looking, so fun to have boots like that. Okay, so now I'm doing my secondary lighting which is just going to bring out some of the highlights of Andy Chan. So I'm going around um, some of these these key shapes in the picture of her, um, like the big outline of the hat there, um, the usual, the arm, the bosom, the side of the face, and um, things like this big tapering ribbon that she's got coming off the hat. Is it unusual? So anywhere where a secondary light source would fall, or where I feel like I need a little bit of extra definition. You can see there, right next to the black outline, it just brings out a little bit of the shape. It's really good at making your characters, first of all, stand out from the, whatever setting they're sitting in, and just making them look more 3D. So I'm fiddling with some of my blending here. So then I go back and I'm like, oh dear, I didn't blend my, my paint here. So I'm actually I've gone back to my tunic layer now, and you can see I'm smoothing out some of this blending. I'm just going over again with the smooth watercolour tool. It's all exactly the same. I'm just using very light pressure, which means that it's not really putting fresh paint down. It's just blending the paint that's already there. 
the simulation of watercolour and, and different painting media in Manga Studio 5 is really very good. It's really very smooth. I had to get used to it because it was it was closer to natural media than I would say have found in Photoshop. So I, I sort of almost had to learn back how to how to use the, the sort of the gentle sort of watercolour brush. But it's worth it, it's really quite nice. So blending in all these other areas now, blending in the boots. I need to do her skin as well and I won't do as much on the hair because there are generally sort of sharper outlines in the hair. Well, at least in her type of hair, look how ragged this hair is. I'm going in doing my whites as well, shading teeth, going in shading all the buckles. You can see how messy my own there. Because these buckles are sort of made of silver material, they've got quite sharp, sort of stark highlights and shadows on them. Let's see what we're doing individually. It's all very basic, you can, especially when it's sped up, you can see the general effect of how it improves the look. It's going in, topping up her scars here, so there is a little bit of a little bit of texture on the scars. Okay, so then I'm generally happy with how she's looking there. So, now I start to block in this incredibly basic, goodness knows quite what, <laughs> coffin background for her. So, I'm picturing female undertaker, she's just sitting in her shop, the way that he himself always does. So, I wanted her to be sort of sitting on something provocatively, so what would she sit on? She always sits on coffins, so, coffins is like, look how blocky this is, I am so talented. This is really basic junior school stuff. Finger painting. I'm just making swatches of some of my colours at the side there in case you need to refer to them. So I've brought my, my rubbish outline forward. This is the roughest background drawing ever, so I'm going to need to go around and refine it and do goodness knows what else. So I'm starting to bring some shape out of these coffins. So I've just got shadows and highlight shades there. I haven't got swatches for the shadows and highlights because I'm just going in rough, rough, rough. So I'm not intending to spend too much time over this backdrop. I just want it to look like she's got a setting of a sort. Especially with my lovely green background, don't you think it looks really like an undertaker's shop? I don't think so. That green is just to help me see how the colours stand out when I'm painting. But that will all be changed. That will become hopefully much more gothic and much more interesting. Look how basic this is, like anyone can do this. And this is all still with the smooth watercolour tool. This entire thing, apart from some rendering of the very, very final bit of the picture, is all done completely in Manga Studio and with the smooth watercolour brush. So some of these outlines don't quite make sense anymore, so I'm going to go in and redo those. Just cleaning up some of these because where they overlap doesn't quite make sense. Oh, lovely, very professional gaps in the colouring there where you can see green coming through the coffins. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm intending to do here. I'm going in again with my greyish, bluish stuff that I used for the shadows on Andy Chan. And I'm going to add some shadows here too, so it doesn't look quite right at the moment because it's not set to multiply yet. So that's it set to multiply, and I turned the opacity down so it makes some shadow. I'm going in with the light blue, which is the secondary light source, is just to bring out some of the shapes of the coffins. Oops. Oops, accidentally almost deleted Andy Chan there. No, I didn't. I just turned her down there a bit. Okay, so now I'm going in with some dark, dark brown, which is going to be multiplied as well, probably, just to bring out some of the outlines. I could have gone in with black, really, but because most of the coffins were brown, I went in and did it with brown. Here I am filling in some of these gaps so that it looks a bit less unprofessional. Okay, now I'm just blocking in the background. Again, look how basic this is. Like anyone can do this stuff. This is me being really, really basic. So I'm just editing how dark I want this background to be. I decided I wanted it 
darker than that. Now I'm going in. This is all the smooth watercolor tool. Still, this is me. I've just made the brush big. And I wouldn't be able to paint on this large scale if I hadn't changed over to my new laptop, which has got much higher RAM. I was wondering there for a minute. Hmm, a window there. But the windows are at the front, the front of Andy Chan's shop. So I decided instead I'm going to sort of put in the basic shapes here of some hanging draperies, sort of some hanging sort of spider web like curtains. Bring out the shape there. I don't know my messy swatch is sitting there. Those will be deleted as well. I'm fine with that. So that gives you an idea of some draperies sitting in the package. It's melding the background there so the problems look as they're actually sitting in the shop rather than floating in space. I'm trying to work if there were some extra details I could do here. No problem there. Put a bit of a, a gold flap on there. I'm just going to very roughly, roughly render in some uh, some carry handles here in the coffins. I ended up not keeping these, but this was just a spur of the moment thing where I thought if I very, very roughly pencil these in um, and paint them, you can see that. The colours are, are quite hard looking, but this is all with the smooth watercolour tool again. If I just change the scale, so you can see me here, this is me rendering a little flat here on this one. Rather good. Rather good. But I ended up not keeping those extra details, I just, I was fiddling just to see whether I fancy keeping them. I didn't want to go into into detail with the background, but I was just wondering whether it would make it look more again. Lowering the opacity there. Just added some more shading. Nice big smooth watercolour brush. Just blotting it all in there. Adding a bit of more shadow underneath Andy Chan there so we can see where she's sitting. Okay, so then I went in. Look how messy this is. This is me adding an overlay of wood grain to this coffin. It starts off looking messy, but as you can see, the brushes get smaller there, and I'm using varying shades just to show what the grain looks like. I decided, mm, no, do I like those? So I put them on a separate layer. So I do I like them? Mm, mm, no. Eventually, I just completely got rid of them. I'm getting a bit swatches there. So. Just adding some foreground draperies here. These are a bit more, a bit more densely coloured because they're in the foreground. And I'm adding a little bit of wood grain to this coffin, not a lot. Again, I didn't want the background to be too busy. Let's be changing the opacity. It's all on separate layers, so I can fiddle with it however I want. So then. We achieved the final picture. And what I had done here is this is the only point I went into Photoshop. I removed the uh, the carry handles and the plaque from the coffin. I put an ink outlines filter onto the background, which brought out the grain of the wood that I painted that I really quite liked. I thought it popped quite nicely. So that's all I did. Um, the background stayed the same. It just had a filter applied on it. So brings out the shapes and I added some wee sparkles there on the drapery. And that's Undy Chan done. So thank you very much for watching.